Hello world, we are back. This is the sixth stop of this historic inaugural season of the Junior Basketball Association. We are coming to you live today from New York, <laughs> New York City, Long Island. We've got a great game for you, a great day for you, really. Starting this thing off, we got the Philadelphia Ballers taking on the Chicago Ballers. Philadelphia team who really, really wants to get their first win. Chicago coming off a huge win. My name is Alan Bell, a.k.a. A.B. the Hero. I'm here with my main man talking with Fresh. Is the energy thick in here this evening? I think it is, and, it's, and the crazy thing about it is it's, just, it's still people starting to come in. It seems like the word is starting to spread around that, you know, we're starting to get a lot more fans in, and, and you saw the, the atmosphere last night, especially for that Dallas-Houston game. It got really, really electric in there, especially on that second game, and I can't wait to see exactly how they're going to, these New York fans are going to be compared to the rest of them, but I'm excited to see this, this, New, uh, this uh, Chicago team and Philadelphia team. As you mentioned, Philadelphia trying to get their first win of the season. Let's see how it goes. Yes, and Philadelphia, who came out super hot. Devin Hayden in that game versus Seattle looked like they were about to shock the world, and all of a sudden they just got a little cold. But they look like a, a basketball team who's probably in the top four or five in this junior basketball association. Chicago, a team who lit up the city. The city of Chicago came out for their last game. Tizo Brown, 46 points in front of his home crowd. The energy in there was crazy. They had little kids lining up at the court to take pictures with Kizo after it. It was a big deal. And folks, tonight is going to be even a, an even bigger deal with the lineup that we have. The second game, we have the New York Ballers taking on the Los Angeles Ballers. A rematch. This New York team is ready to play in front of their home crowd. And if you look behind me, New York is in the building. Now, you mentioned Kizo Brown from the Chicago Ballers. Kizo Brown, 46 points in the last game. I'm interested, interested to see how he plays away from Chicago. First game, not bad, 22 points, but wasn't as efficient as he was in the last game. So the t true testament to some of these, these um, players is how, how do you play on the road? How do you play, um, how do you play in, your, in another arena? So I want to see exactly how they play Philadelphia. Can Devin Hay get hot? Can Jalen Nixon get hot? Can Marquise Johnson, players who had a huge contribution in the first game, can they do the same to get their first win? Folks, I believe we're going to have two great games as we had as we had in every city. If you're in the area, get in the building. And if you're tuned in on the live stream, be here with us all day. Watch these warm-ups, and you'll see the fire and desire in these players' eyes. Hello, everybody. We are here today, Long Island, New York, David Mack Arena on the campus of Hofstra University. Our first game today is between the Chicago Ballers and the Philadelphia Ballers. We have the Chicago Ballers entering the building right now, and they're, and they're excited to play, folks. Kizo Brown with that ball in his hand, like he had it in his hand a ton of the last game that they played. But every time he threw it at the basket, he was swishing that thing. Expect more of that from Kizo this evening. Absolutely. And I believe they call it Strong Island AB down here in Hofstra University, David Macarena. I'm, I'm curious to see just how the Chicago team comes out as I see Dion Lau approaching, <laughs> approaching the court right now. Philadelphia is going to come out right now. We talked about it in, in, in the pregame, well, still pregame, but Devin Hay from this Philadelphia team is going to have to get it going. 
Definitely want to see how he comes out starting tonight. It's going to be a great game. Definitely. And just to, to really drive that point home about the game Kizo had in his last um, outing, 46 points. 42% from behind the arc, dropped six three-pointers, 45% from the field for the evening, shooting 80% from the free throw line. He was hot, folks. Right now, though, we have the Philadelphia Ballers touching the court. David Hayes, a guy who is Mr. Offense for them, a guy who will do it all, can do it all, and is a solid player. I was at that Philadelphia tryout with, where David Hayes tried out to, to make this Junior Basketball Association team, and after that tryout, everybody said, David Hayes is the best player here. When we watch... Oh. When we, watched, when we watched them in training camp and folks started to evaluate this Philadelphia team, everybody said Devin Hayes is probably the best player on this team. When you watch that first game and you seen him shoot the ball from all over the court, everybody in the comment section said Devin Hayes is probably the best player on the court. He was special, A.B. I, 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 I said it even in the first game that I didn't get a chance to see this Philadelphia team as much as I would have liked during training camp. And if you, if you would have asked Every other team, every other player not on the Philadelphia team, they probably would have said that the Philadelphia team is the weakest team in this league. And they heard all the chatter, heard all of the, the people talking about them, and they said, we got to show you guys tonight. And they had that Seattle Ballers team on the ropes the entire game until the, until the fourth quarter. So um, Atla Atlanta team, my, my apologies. But they had the Atlanta team on the, on, on the ropes the entire game until that fourth quarter. So I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited to see exactly how they how they respond tonight. Looking forward to seeing a good matchup. And definitely in a sleeper for this Philadelphia team. Oh, here we we got ZO2 in the building right oh, now, get folks. Off, get off. And if you if you're in the area and you want to come out, let's uh let's take a moment and sing the national anthem. get this ball game underway. Starting five for these Chicago ballers. Kizo Brown, a guy who is expected to put up major points. Dion Lyle, who was the second head on Chicago's two-headed monster in their last outing, who showed up and put on a, a major performance of his own. Harrison Rieger. Rieger. A guy who put up some clutch buckets for this Chicago team in their first overtime game in the Junior Basketball Association. Down the line, he was a huge factor. Philadelphia, as we spoke earlier, Devin Hayde, a guy who you can expect to be very hot from the outside for the rest of the evening. Taj Royster is a guy who made his debut in their first game talked to him before that game he said man I just really want to get about 20 rebounds and that was his 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 kind of guesstimation for that game Taj Royster ended up with 22 points 17 rebounds 60 percent from the field and lit it up from the outside shooting 57 percent from the outside big man can do it all a true unicorn but folks, as you seen earlier, ZO2 is in the building. And if you're under 15 years old, go get your parents and tell them 
Come to the David Mack Arena, drop the code ZO2, and you can have free entrance into tonight's game. Got the first tip off underway. Kizo Brown bringing it past half court. See if Kizo can get it going quickly tonight. Yep. Folks, you know how we like to do this to get things started. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We want to get you shouted out. Let us know who's your favorite player. Jalen Nixon with his early causing the early turnover with the steal. Wide open. Misses off the side of the rim. As you can see, they'll be shooting from that NBA three-point line this evening. It's a little bit further back than the, a lot of these players are used to. Well, that's a good adjustment you know, coming from high school. Even those who have minimal college experience are playing and trying to shoot from that deep three. Kizo Brown showing the quickness off the dribble. Gets a little contact as he's trying to lay that one in. Unable to finish. Turnover on this end for the Chicago Ballers. Deion Lyle looking to get the offense started. Pull up. Mid-range jumper off the back iron. Tone Singleton with the one-handed board. Unable to pull it in. Now, I've spoken a lot about... Antonio Singleton in the past games. I really want to see if this can be his breakout game for the Chicago Ballers team. We got some shout outs coming out in the comment section. San Diego's in the house, Rooster, Ohio. That's where Devin Hayde is from. Melissa Ann giving him a shout out. Denver, Rooster's Colorado. 80221. Shout out. Juan Buckner. Little step back there from Jalen Nixon. Just couldn't get that one to fall. A little short there. Kizo Brown still in attack mode from the other night. Shows he still has a hot hand in the paint. A.B., he plays with such poise. If you can just tell he's played a ton of basketball. He's a very talented player. Definitely. His basketball IQ comes off as you see him. He knows when to slow it down in transition, when to speed it up, when to attack, when to kick it. Do it all player for the Chicago team. Absolutely. Jalen Nixon able to dig in there and cause a jump ball. Philadelphia Ballers coach James Martin fired up already. Jalen Nixon versus Deion Lyle on this jump ball. Who do you think is going to win? Let us know in the comments right now. Jalen Nixon won that jump ball. Not the greatest not toss. Not the greatest toss for sure. Pretty sure I could have did a better job. Got a little advantage right there. Coach James Martin. Telling his team, we don't want to watch all that fancy dribbling this evening. Well, James Martin's an old school coach. I mean, he's been around for many, many years, and he wants to see his team run some sets, get to their offense, not really about the one-on-one -on -one flashy stuff. Devin Hay can do that, though, as we just saw there. Going to his left, nice little fadeaway. We see Jalen Nixon is very active so far on this defensive end this evening. Causing a few turnovers. Quick hands. Coach James Martin still pressing him to do better. Well, he didn't like the fact that you know, Jalen Nixon kind of almost got a delay a game there. It wasn't really necessary in his eyes. Kizo with the nice step back. Tone Singleton, Naptown's finest. Well, there's some of that aggression that I, that I wanted to see. Got the rebound, was looking to try to get himself his own shot there. Took it up really strong, got to the free throw line here. Tony O. Singleton looking to take the lead for the Chicago Ballers with this free throw. 
splash. Nothing but the net. I want to see him get an alley oop or on a, on a fast break or something. I've been talking about his explosive, his explosion, and his uh, athleticism. Just hadn't had a chance to really see it in these first two ball games. Yes, Tone Singleton is a guy who can jump out of the gym. Literally. I always tell the story about him at the Chicago tryout where it was one of those moments where it was a little break. Some of the kids were showing off what they can do, having like a little miniature dunk contest. Tone Singleton throws down the most vicious windmill <laughs> I ever seen. <laughs> and the whole gym said, hold up, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Do that again. And he proceeded to throw down three windmills in a row. Devin Good Hay with a beautiful there. block. Philadelphia team playing some team defense here. Harrison Rieger pushing in transition. Unable to finish. I think if Rieger could have done that over, he would have saw Dixon trail. He would have probably lobbed that up, bounced it off the glass for him. They we talk about Antonio Singleton jumping out the gym. Montreal Dixon could probably jump to the moon if he tried. I've seen him do it before, so I know he can. I won't be surprised. So we got eight minutes and 33 seconds left in this first quarter. We have the Philadelphia Ballers leading six to four over the Chicago Ballers. The Chicago team can't come out too comfortable right now. They had a a very dramatic win versus Houston in Chicago the other day. And we don't want them to think that they've arrived yet. They beat a very, very good Houston team. But like you said, the Chicago arena, the Wind Trust Arena was rocking so much that it was basically six on five in there. Well, they were definitely the six man. And, and that's another thing I was, I was mentioning when you're playing at home, how do you respond when you're not playing at home? And that's what I want to see from both of these teams. Philadelphia trying to get their first win. Chicago trying to stay in the win column. How do they respond tonight? Let's see what Eddie Denard has drawn up out of the timeout here. Josiah Pope fighting for that rebound. Yeah, Braden Hargrove, Linnell Watson, and Josiah Pope checking in the ball game here. Beautiful thing that I love about watching these games is the development that we're seeing from these players. From game to game, from training camp, we've seen all these players grow and just get better and better. Antonio Singleton, that's four points early on in this ball game, two times basically that, since he's gotten the ball, that he's taking the ball up strong, trying to get himself going early. He, he must be looking or listening to some of the uh, broadcasts in the past. You think so? I think so. Antonio Singleton completes the three-point play. Evan Hay with a beautiful move. And a saucy pass. The sauce jar is opened up early this evening with Devin Hayden and his smooth dribbling. Kizo Brown drives in the lane. But Philadelphia forces a turnover. James Martin calling out a play here. Calling out the play, Apple. Which means, Devin, hey, you get us a bucket. I love the way that Jalen Nixon plays, A.B. You see how strong, he had an opportunity to take that three, said no, let me take it up strong, goes on the opposite side of the goal, scores for the Philadelphia team. Jalen Nixon is a player who believes in his ability to finish around the rim. He believes he does that like nobody else. Well, you have a wonderful story about Jalen Nixon and, and, and his path to get into the JBA League, if you can talk about that at some point, A.B. Oh, yeah, definitely. Jalen Nixon is a guy who also showed up at that Philadelphia tryout. 
And we watched him put so much jelly on that ball all throughout that trial. I was able to speak with him afterwards, and he talked to me about coming from Norfolk, Virginia, where he felt like he just didn't get as much of a look out of high school as he really wanted to. Found a college in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Community College, where he went from not starting as a senior in high school, playing community college, and being the player of the year. Dropping 40 points, said that he was a Philadelphia, all in the newspapers, all on the news. And as he continued his career, this opportunity came, and he decided that the Philadelphia Ballers of the Junior Basketball Association is where he wanted to take his talents. And that's how we have Jalen Nixon here with us today, folks. Well, he is a very talented player, as we've seen in these first two games. Devin Hayde is uh, kind of having a tough go of it right now. Hasn't really settled down. Uh, he's made that one nice shot, but other than that, he's kind of struggling right now. One of the things that I noticed here is we had Todd Royster in the Ooh, starting yeah, lineup the know. last time we've seen these Philadelphia ballers. He's coming off the bench right now. Braden Hargrove gets the charge. He's got to be able to, to read this play a little bit better. Jalen Nixon was right, was right there in the help lane, stepped in beautifully to take that charge. Braden's got to kick that one out. One of the things I want to see from this Philadelphia team is them to get Devin Hayde off the ball. Right now, he's bringing it up. And in the, in the few times that we've seen him take a shot, it came from bringing the ball up the court, initiating a dribble, and then getting in the lane and pulling up. Well, both of us know Eddie Denard pretty well, and toughness is his mantra. He speaks about toughness all throughout training camp. That's what he believes from the Chicago. They're not going to let Devin Hay just uh, spot up and just shoot three-pointers all night long. They're just not going to do that. So as I, as I was looking at that, you know, Antonio Singleton is pretty much all in his grill the entire time off the play, as you mentioned. So we'll see if they can get Devin Hay open, see if they can get him going, maybe drop a play for him. Got Taj Royster getting ready to check into this ball game. He's going to be an X factor for this Philadelphia team if they want to pull out a W today. Elijah Hall. Hey, hey, hey look, sees Jalen Nixon. Oh, two-handed jam. Jalen Nixon showing that he's got some jelly and he's got some jam <laughs> and he'll use e either one on your toes. Now, I'm actually a jam person myself, honestly. What's the difference between jelly and jam? The jam, jam has got fruit in it, right? Well, they both have fruit. I mean, like pieces of solid fruit. Jam spreads better. So it kind of like spreads like butter. You know, like jelly is a little more clumpy. You kind of have to like work it a little bit. Jam, you just put it on there and it just spreads pretty simple. That doesn't sound like an accurate dirt I'm, definition. Trust me, that's what it was. That's how it was told to me because I was I've been a jelly person my entire life until college. Nice Josiah. block there about Josiah Pope. Pope. My roommate at the time, I was like, "Why are you buying jams? Like it, it spreads better." And he was absolutely right. So I've been buying jam ever since. Nice extra pass there by Bredo Hargrove. Folks who are tuned in, let us know the difference between jam and jelly. And let me know if I was right from the from the beginning. AB a doesn't seem to believe me. I'll just hit Jawan Buckner getting buckets. Jawan Buckner, he shot that all the way from Philadelphia, his hometown. Philadelphia is not really that far from New York. Maybe a couple of hours. Wouldn't be surprised if some of these players had some Philly support in the building. Marquise, the catalyst. Johnson with the slam. Linnell Watson, who had some big buckets in Chicago's last game. Coach Denaro is going to need a timeout. Jalen Nixon is looking like a smooth wide receiver out here running these deep routes. 
getting out in front of the Chicago defense. Quick hands from this Philadelphia defense. Now we failed to note that Todd Royster, former UTEP Division I player, number 35 for the Philadelphia Ballers, is checking into the game. Also, Jordan Wooden for Philadelphia has just checked in as Chicago has made a few wholesale changes. Deion Lyle, Harrison Rieger, and Montreal Dixon check back in. Kizo with the nice drive to the basket, unable to finish with the left hand. He's been very aggressive. They're just not falling for him tonight, A.B. We've seen that in the first game from the Chicago team. Came out very aggressive, wasn't hitting early, but then he got really hot towards the middle of the game and cooled off a little bit towards the end. He's up playing some tight defense on Marquise Johnson. Marquise Johnson able to draw the foul. Marquise Johnson from here in New York. Middletown, New York. Coach James Martin calling out a set here. Looks like they're trying to get Devin Hay to bucket. Three minutes and 17 seconds left. Oh, cash Juwan money. Buckner. Juwan Buckner. Buckets. Buckner getting buckets tonight early. Chicago needed that right there. They just needed to see the ball going to, a, to the bucket. They have been missing pretty much every shot in the last several possessions. Deion Lau, Conference USA sixth man of the year. Kizo Brown with the three. Oh, they count that a two. Once Kizo starts to see that ball go through the hoop, it's lights out. Devin Hay with the acrobatic finish, unable to get it to go. I would prefer that Deion Lau kind of pulled that back a little bit, run something there. I mean, you just had, had five straight points. Didn't really need that shot right there. Folks, we're coming to you live today from Long Island, New York. Strong, Strong Island. Island. That's right. For our sixth stop in this inaugural season of the Junior Basketball Association, we have a great game for you today. The Chicago Ballers taking on the Philadelphia Ballers. Philadelphia leading 24, Chicago Ballers 11. Buckner, ice cold from the outside, showing he's got ice in his veins. Jordan Wooden, a strong ball handler for this Philly team, can get buckets on that offensive end. I think this Philadelphia team is showing the entire lead. They're a lot deeper and a lot more talented than everyone was trying to give them credit for. Yeah, Brandon Stacy checking back in. Let us know in the comment section if you watched either one of these teams last game. Oh, Devin Hayes showing us that shot. Devin Hayes looking like Devin Booker. See, that's what I wanted to see. Get Devin Hayes off the ball, run him a little play, have him come off the screen and let him knock down a bucket. Josiah Pope with a strong rebound. 
Kizo from the corner. Taj Royster. Rebounding machine. Marquise Johnson slowing it down for this Philadelphia team. James Martin, he likes these fruit uh, plays. He just called a banana play. I'm not sure what that exactly is, but so we've heard apple. Now we've heard banana. banana. Yes. Now this is a, a, a nursery rhyme song. Apples, apples and bananas. And bananas. Yeah. I don't know that song. <laughs> I, I thought I did, but it didn't. I like go to too. eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Never heard that. No, I don't know. I heard that. Uh, so you don't know anything uh, about uh, jam? Uh, 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 yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Sound familiar. There I, I can't remember it, though. You've been watching these teams. Let us know who's your favorite team in the JBA so far. Who's your favorite team, and who's the team who you think is the number one ranked team right now in the Junior Basketball Association? Harrison Rieger, the ball in the corner, kicks it around to Kizo. Head fake, drives in the lane, pulls up. Gets his own rebound. There's a lid essentially on the basket for Kizo. He's, he's made a couple shots, but most of them are pretty decent looks, but they're just really not falling tonight right now. We've this seen a couple games where there's just been a lid on the basket, and then all of a sudden, Somebody gets up there with a screwdriver and just takes the whole lid off, and then it's just a, a well. Well, it might be a situation where, you know, Eddie Denard, and this would be this would have been a pretty good substitution. Go ahead and get Kizo and let him get a blow. He's played the entire first quarter so far. And it's just kind of kind of get him settled down. See if he can get back in this game and start putting up some points for the Chicago team. So far, we got folks who say Atlanta is the best team in the JBA. We got some LAs in there as well, and some Chicago. It's good defense there by Harrison Rieger. Harrison Rieger from Morristown, New Jersey. Morristown, New Jersey, stand up. Harrison Rieger always has some strong support on the live stream. As we talk about him, he goes and gets a bucket. Now, you know, normally I'd say you need to hold for the for the last shot right there, but Philadelphia basically just let him drive that ball right in. So Chicago, who was down as many as, I believe it was 17 points, 24 to 7 now, only down 13. So a little bit better showing in the past uh, couple minutes of the, of the first quarter. All right, so through our first quarter, we have Philadelphia leading 28 over Chicago 15. Both teams shooting pretty well from the free throw line this evening. Turnover's a little high for the Chicago team with eight already. They're going to need to fix that. Absolutely. They want to get back into this game. Now, what I want to see and what I'm interested to see is how this Philadelphia team continues to, to put on for the rest of this game. You know, we talked about how they came out really strong against that Atlanta team. The Atlanta team that many people believe is the best team in the league. Can this Philadelphia team keep this lead and hold it for four quarters? That is definitely the question for this Philadelphia team. Right now, leading Philadelphia in scoring, Elijah Hall was six. Juwan Buckner was six. And Jalen Nixon was six as well. So right now, they're doing it by com committee. One of the persons who we, we said at the beginning of this game was going to have to fill up that bucket, Devin Hay with five points. Chicago, though, is going to find have to find out who's their leading scorer for the evening. Right now, it's Antonio Singleton with five. Right behind him, Kizo Brown with four. Harrison Ryder with two points. We got B. Jones getting a shout out here in the comment section. Shout out to B. Jones. B. Jones. Ones and twos. Producer for Lonzo Ball. A few hit tracks. Oh. Get off, get off. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Lonzo Ball, who is in the building? Sit courtside with Demo. Get, get your merch. Get your merch, get your merch. Get your merch, get your merch. Antonio Singleton in transition right now. Stops it, kicks it over to Kizo, kicks it to Harrison Rieger. Oh. 
Eric Sariga can fly a little bit now. He absolutely can. And I always tell this every time Chicago plays, and I interviewed him before he tried out in Philadelphia, and, and I asked him, what do you want to show to the, the, the evaluation committee? And he said, you know, I want to show that I can play really tight defense, and I can play this game, and also that not all white guys can't jump, that we actually can. And he's definitely shown that plenty of times throughout training camp and for the Chicago team. Definitely. One of the things that I love about Harrison Rieger's game is he can get saucy with the dribble. Yeah, he'll, he'll, show, can, he'll, he'll show a little something every now and then. He can take you off the dribble. Some pretty decent ball handling. So can Jawan Buckner as he drives to the basket and is unable to finish. But more so um, than, than what the, the saucy dribbling that Harrison Rieger might do is, is plays like you just saw right there, you know, coming out from the backside, knocking that ball out. Very important player for the Chicago team. Brandon Stacy calling for the ball. There's a lot of standing around by this Philadelphia team. I know uh, James Martin's not really going to like what's going on right now. Devin Hay pulls up. Buckets. He is a complete offensive player, A.B. I, I love watching him play on the offensive end. You know what Devin Hay looks like on the offensive end? A praying mantis. If you just watch his ball movement, he just looks like a praying mantis as he's Working that ball through the dribble. Next time he gets the ball, watch him. I'm trying to, I'm trying to follow you on that. Follow, look at him. Watch his. <laughs> you see what I'm saying there? I'm still not following. Wait till you. Now you just don't know what to pray. Nice man. roll there by Elijah Hall. Elijah Hall. Tony Singleton, or I should say, slip rather. Coming in, trying to block that shot. <laughs> Did they give him that bucket? You saw Elijah Hall just slip. Uh, no, I don't think they did. Right. Elijah Hall slipped that screen there beautifully. Jawan Buckner was able to hit him. Almost finished with the N1 there. Tom Singleton with the block, letting Elijah Hall know there's no easy buckets in the Junior Basketball Association. We always say that is exactly right. We have a question here. Who are your top five JBA players so far? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section. Devin Hay, top five. The comment section says right now. I could agree with that. Jalen Nixon still with the active hands. Tone Singleton can fly, decides to not use the jam, but to give us a little jelly. Just a little bit, and that's what we talk, I've been imploring this from him from the past three games to be a lot more aggressive and that's what we've been seeing so far. Jawan Buckner with a nice drive and bucket. Coach Ed Denar is not going to be happy with Montreal Dixon on that last possession. Didn't give a lot of effort right there to basically let Jawan Buckner shoot right over him. Juwan Buckner rocking those gumdrop mellow ball ones, a.k.a. breast cancer awareness. Jasmine Park Parker says Devin Hayes is definitely top five, top five, top five, three times. Top five, top five, top five. We had a reset of the, we, we know, so they reset the shot clock on, on accident. Putting five seconds back on there. Got some LaMelo balls in there as a top player in the Junior Basketball Association. Kevin Gregory says, Curtis Hollis, LaMelo Ball, Devin Hay, Kizo Brown, and Greg Floyd. All right, let's get some shout outs of, of where y'all tuning in from today. Let us know who's the furthest from New York City. You're getting a lot of international viewers as well. Let's see if our friends from Nova Scotia and Australia decide to tune in, tune in as well. Devin Hay. 
What's his nickname? I, I'm stepping in your lane right now. <laughs> Devin Hay, the praying mantis. I'm not sure if he'll like that one. It's Brandon Stacy with the left-handed sweet stroke from three. That's why that's not my lane. Maybe I don't pick the ones that they like. <laughs> I like it though. He just reminds me of praying mantis. We got Chicago in the house representing Kizo Brown in the tag mode. He's pressing right now, ABN. And I mentioned right before, um, right before the, the first quarter was over that he probably needed to take a seat just to get himself composed. And it looks like Eddie Denard is in uh, agreement with me as Kizo Brown checks out Braden Hargrove from Racine, Wisconsin, checks into the game. And you know how much I love Racine, Wisconsin. Yes, we know. A league of their own. Yes, yeah, there you go. Yes. Champions of that movie as well. Somebody shouted out Norfolk, Virginia, hometown of Jalen Nixon. I have some family in Norfolk, Virginia. Gave Jordan Wood in the green light. One second. Jordan Wooden un unaware of the shot clock. We got Gary Indiana in the building, home of the Jacksons, right? Yes, Michael Jackson. His home is still there. Mike Jarrett Childhood says home. Detroit in the house. Brandon Red, Louisville, Kentucky. It's a pretty lackadaisical pass by Dion Lau. But the play wasn't there. And he just probably shouldn't have thrown that lob up there. As Marquise, the catalyst, Johnson with the and one. Marquise from Middletown, New York. New York. And he's singing it again. I have to, man. I, <laughs> New York is, is, is also one of those cities that I feel like I grew up in, even though I haven't never really been there. Exactly. <laughs> it's like my home away from home. Home's home, and the home away from that home, New York City. We got a R.I.P. Joe Jackson on the comment list. For sure, R.I.P. Joe Jackson. Someone from Rome. Sorry, I missed the name. Brado Hargrove. Nice put back there by Montreal Dixon. Freeport, Illinois. Shout out to Kentucky. I see you out there. Keith Johnson driving, tries to kick it out. Deion Lau with the quick hands. Deion Lau driving, finds Harrison Rieger. Unable to finish, but Montrell Dixon is with the putback. Johnny on the spot again. Taj Royster looking to get his much his first offensive touch of the evening. He was the guy in the last game we seen him light it up from the outside, inside, and all over the court. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of energy from him to start this ball game. Definitely, that was a talking with Coach James Martin before Philadelphia Ballers last game. He had a lot of questions. They were the only team at that point who had played a game, and he was still fully unaware of what he had. Was he a four on one right here. Harrison Rieger still trying to get a block there. He was unaware of what he had as a team, and he told me that he's really interested in seeing what, how they look together as a unit in the thick of the fire. Coach Eddie Denard just went right up to Deion Lau and got right in his face after he called that timeout. He was not happy with how they executed that last possession. Very lackadaisical on the defensive end. Four on one fast break. He is very disappointed right now. All right, so here through the second quarter, we have the top players for both teams. Jawan Buckner with eight points. 100% from behind the arc. Antonio Singleton, who is playing very much more aggressive this game, as you would, would, would have loved to see him play. 
Six boards, seven points. Oh, we see Jawan Buckner with five assists, really being the facilitator for this Philadelphia squad. That's what I feel like his role is for this team, especially when you got a guy like Devin Hayden who can, can light up the scoreboard. When you got a solid point guard like Jawan Buckner who can facilitate that offense and do a lot of the heavy lifting as far as ball handling goes. Just helps the offense flow. You see the big ballers in the building. LeVar Ball. The, the big baller brand is in the building. We got ZO2 over there on the bench. LeVar Ball, LeVar Ball walking in right now. It's official, folks. Marquise Johnson probably could have taken that all the way. I know he wanted to be unselfish there, but Jalen was a little bit too low to really do something with that. And it tripped up on Chicago player's foot. Now five minutes and 40 seconds. Left in the second quarter, Philadelphia Ballers leading 40. Chicago Ballers 23. LeVar and Lonzo the sharing world stories. Zio too. I know Linnell Watson with the putback representing Chi-Town Inglewood's finest. Travel right here on Marquise Johnson. Coach James Martin does not agree with that uh, traveling call on Marquise Johnson. Brando Hargrave driving to the hoop, unable to finish with the left hand up and under layup. Jordan Wooden kicks it. They've got a mismatch here with Todd Royster being guarded by Well, Linnell he's standing Watson. on the perimeter. That's one thing. Long Philly rebound there by the ball. Marquise the ball Johnson. Just don't see that mismatch. But it's just like you said, Todd Royster is standing out at the three-point line. Todd Royster, he's you know, kind of standing there with his hands on his hips almost as if he's just very disengaged he definitely wanted the ball right there well if you want the ball ab if i'm six nine it's like he is and i have someone six foot guarding me i'm probably going to take him down to the post and punish him Keith johnson gets his own miss harrison rieger Nice charge by Jalen Nixon. Jalen Nixon doing it all for this Philadelphia Ballers team. We got a lot of shout outs in the comment section for Linnell Watson, AKA Bam Bam. Bam Bam. For those of y'all who know Linnell as Bam Bam, why? How did he get that nickname? I never had the chance to ask him that. I, I know that's what he's been called by, but let us know where does the nickname Bam Bam come from? B. Jones cranking out this Jay-Z in here right now. B. Jones really facilitating these New York vibes. To get any more New York in here, I'm going to start singing. <laughs> Well, that's too late. You've already done it. Well, I'm going to have to kick it back up. Devin Hay with a rare miss. Kizo Brown now back in the game, A.B. I want to see if he can get this Chicago team going. Jordan Wooden with some quick hands. He's got Devin Hay on the other end. Got to take that one up quicker. Nice finish through contact from Jordan Wooden. 
Oh, bam, bam. Almost flushed it home, but puts it right in with the alley oop. Thomas Singleton with the great court vision. Nice skip there by Taj Royster. Taj Royster starting to come alive here with that rebound. Philadelphia coaches want to see Taj Royster start going to work. He's got some mismatches here. They want to try to exploit. Juwan Buckner. Going to get the offense started for this Philadelphia Ballers team. You see, that's the difference between the, the NBA three-point line and the, the high school or college. If that's high school or college, they're probably knocking that shot down, but that's just a bit short from Jawan Buckner. Nice extra pass there by Montreal Dixon. Devin Head right there, that was a very smart play not to not to shoot that ball. He attacked that close out there and, and got the foul. Mississippi in the house. Lego. M I. Crooked letter, crooked letter I. Crooked letter, crooked letter I. Hump back, hump back I. Is that right? <laughs> that is right. Thank you. I hadn't said that in about a hundred years. Yeah, you were struggling, I could tell. Yeah. Devin Hay misses the first free throw. Kizo Brown showing a quick handle. Nice dish to De Deion Lau. You know, I said it last game, you know, someone else besides Kizo is going to have to get it going for the Chicago team. And Deion Lau is more than capable representing Hastings, Nebraska. Nebraska. Jawan Buckner getting to the bucket. Jawan Buckner all about the Bucks. Kizo with a nice heads up right there, finds Linnell Watson, oh. who splashes home a three. Bam, bam. That's the offense that this Chicago team needs to get going. You got Kizo driving to the lane, and instead of trying to finish aggressively around the basket, he's kicking it to his teammates. And they're getting buckets. Devin Hayes, praying mantis. Waits, runs down the shot clock and pulls a three, unable to connect. 55 seconds left in the first quarter. First half, rather. Josiah Pope misses the rim there. Juwan Buckner slowing it down. Devin Hay wide open. folks 39.9 seconds left in this first half we have the philadelphia ballers leading 45 chicago ballers 34. we're coming to you live today from new york city long island new york to be exact on the campus of hofstra university david macarena there's been a lot of legends who played here a lot of great basketball has taken place in this building. Speedy Claxton. Speedy Claxton. Hofstra legend. <laughs> Jawan Buckner continues to get buckets. Kizo Brown drives quick hands from his Philadelphia defense, stopping him in the lane. Chicago retains possession. Uh, 
have folks on the live stream. One Devin Hay to make him proud. Worcester, Ohio's finest. I've got a feeling after tonight, you're going to be extremely proud of Devin Haight. You have Bam Bam's mom checking in. Alcine, I think that's how he said that we pronounced that, if I'm correct. Let us know where the nickname Bam Bam came from. I asked that earlier. I didn't ask you why you were out here. How does Linnell get the nickname Bam Bam? He's having a really good game as well. Todd Forster at the free throw line. Off the back iron, 17.6 seconds left in the second half. Philadelphia Ballers leading 47 to 34. Todd Royster with zero points. Well, one basket now, seven rebounds. Philadelphia would love to see some of that offense from Todd Royster. It definitely helped them seal this victory. Close it out as they have the lead. Deion Lyle looking for the last shot. Drives, unable to finish. Todd Royster launches one. All right, folks, so that, that's the end of the first half. We have the Philadelphia Ballers leading 48, Chicago Ballers 34. Let's check out these stats. We see right now from the, as far as rebounds go, both teams are pretty much neck and neck. What we're going to see some differences here is steals. Philadelphia, who's been very active with their hands all first half, nine steals, 12 assists, getting folks involved. We've seen Jawan Buckner, who has been able to drive and kick. Devin Hayde, who has been able to get it going from the outside. This Philadelphia team looking to pull off their first victory of the Junior Basketball Association. Chicago, who just came off a huge victory, an overtime victory over Houston in their home city of Chicago, looking to spoil it for Philadelphia. I want to throw it over here. We have an interview with Tone Singleton with Brandon Williams. Let's go. All right, I'm here with Antonio Singleton of the Chicago Ballers. Antonio, you've been starting off aggressive this game. How do you maintain that personally for the rest of the game? Um, just continue to do me and continue to just be aggressive, do what the coach asked me to do, and buy in with the team. Do anything to, do anything to make my team win, you know. Right now, you guys are down 14 at the half. How does this Chicago team come back in the second half? We got to take care of the ball, less turnovers, get to the foul line more. We got to knock down shots. Good luck in the second half. Philadelphia Ballers, Jawan Buckner. Jawan, you have 12 points in the first half right now. How do you keep that going in the second half? Um, I came in feeling good today, so our coach, he wanted us to run the offense, so he know what he's doing, so he just run the offense. And also, you guys are leading pretty heavily right now, and in the first game against Atlanta, you squandered the lead. How does this Philadelphia team maintain this lead for four quarters? We got to play together and keep playing with each other, and they tired. So our coach, we run all day in practice. We condition, so we ready for this. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. Now let's check out some highlights from Jawan Buckner from the first half. All 
All right, so we, we've just had a really good first half. Philadelphia leading 48 to 34 over the Chicago Ballers. What we see from that Philadelphia team is they're doing it by committee. They've got six out of eight players right now with at least five points here in this first half. And Jawan Buckner, who's lighting it up for 12 of his own. As we can see, if they can continue that pace, this game could get ugly for the Chicago Ballers. Well, I talked to Jawan at the halftime, and he said that he's feeling really good today. I asked him about the 12 points. Now, I want to see Kizo Brown. He needs to step it up in the second half. He has to get it going. Antonio Singleton is playing pretty well for the Chicago team, but they're going to need uh, Kizo, Deion Lau to really step it up so they can finish out this game and possibly get the W. Definitely. After that game that we witnessed from Chicago versus a really, really good Houston team, able to take them into overtime, we've seen that they have the ability to put points on the board at a very high place, at a very high pace, and I believe they can do that together today. They just have to continue to facilitate that offense through Kizo and get it going. Let's check out some highlights from this first half.
Welcome back, folks. We're back, getting ready to start this second half of basketball. Chicago Ballers taking on the Philadelphia Ballers. Right now, leading the way for this Philadelphia team, Jawan Buckner with 12 points, five assists, and three rebounds. Really doing it all for that Philadelphia team. Well, you asked me about nicknames, and I think I may have one for Mr. Jawan Buckner. I think I might start calling him Jay Buckets, especially if he keeps on shooting the way he's been shooting tonight. 12 big points for this Philadelphia team, leading 14 points. Chicago definitely has the opportunity to to, to make it uh, an interesting game. So we'll see how we'll see how the Chicago team comes out in this third quarter. Kizo Brown, very quiet first first half. Four points. That is definitely not the Kizo that we are used to. So let's see what we we'll see what they got going in the second half. I would tell you I like that that nickname Jay Buckets. I was hey. gonna call him Bucky Big Bucket. Okay, now nah, I like Jay Buckets a little bit better. <laughs> But they, they've been asking, you know, what's my what's my thing? And I think, you know, the nicknames is definitely something I'm, I'm pretty yes. pretty decent with. I'll give you that. You got it. You see Todd Royster starting the second half. I, I, I'm wondering if maybe him not starting the first half or, or starting the game was uh, some sort of a suspension or something. I'm not really sure, but I have to get some clarification on that. But he is starting in the oh. second half. Oh, Devin De Hayes. It's limping right now for this Philadelphia team. That is not a good sight to see. Jordan Wooden's heading to the ball game for Devin right now. See if they can get an injury timeout. Devin Hayes falls over here to the bench, holding on that right ankle. Kizo Brown looking to get this Chicago offense started, driving to the basket. That was a nice drive right there. That is definitely one way to get him going. Want to see this Philadelphia team get those active hands they had earlier. Hope this sight of Devin Hayes on the sideline isn't a demoralizing their morale so quickly. Jay Buckus, Jawan Buckner representing Philadelphia PA. Deion Lau in the lane it's for a finish over Marquise Johnson. Is able to draw contact and the foul. You know, we highlight this pretty much every game he's played in. You know, Deion Lau, former UTSA sixth man, six man of the year for the Conference USA. Can be a big player for the Chicago team. All right, folks, as we come back from halftime, let us know where you're tuning in from. We got a few more folks in the building with us. Y'all know how we do it. Shout us Shouts out. Shouts out. Shout, yeah, shout out your, rep your city. That's rep best way your for city, city. <laughs> rep your city. Deion Lyle sinks the second one. Jawan Buckner, AKA Jay Buckets. Showing that saucy dribble. Trying to get this Philly offense. Nice what a back door pass. there by the Marquise the Catalyst. Johnson. Well, you know, that starts off with Jawan Buckner, though. I mean, he kind of lowered the defense to sleep there. And good job by Marquise by that nice V cut back door as Harrison Rieger. Tone Singleton able to find Harrison with the assist off his butt. Is that a butt assist, you said? He was sitting on the ground, found him and made the pass as he was sitting on the ground. You know, I remember there was a, a pass that uh, I believe Tom Brady did years back where he threw a first down and sit, basically he fell down and threw it from his butt. So, some people have skills like that. See that this right play there. one more time, man. Boom. That. They flying through the air. Beautiful two-handed flush from Marquise Johnson. I'm more impressed by the cut, though. I'm just, you know, one of those basketball peers. That was just a beautiful play there by both of them, both Jawan Buckner and Marquise Johnson. Jawan Buckner, 14 points, six assists. We have someone from South Korea tuning, tuning in with us. 
Juan Buckner looking to make this second one, extend his lead, and the mission accomplished. Philadelphia Ballers leading 53 to 39 over the Chicago Ballers with nine minutes and 55 seconds left in this in this third quarter. Tone Singleton, he's a guy who can shoot it. Todd Royster kicking it over to Juan J. Buckets. Marquise the Catalyst. Oh. <laughs> Jay Buckets and Marquise the Catalyst. Johnson has some chemistry going on. They sure there. do, A.B. Two beautiful passes from Juwan Buckner to Marquise Johnson, both ending in beautiful buckets. You know, earlier, you know, Marquise Johnson's father actually came up to us, and you can just see the pride on his face, you know, just talking about his son. You know, he really loves his son and supports his son as Antonio Singleton with the deep three answering back on his own. Antonio Singleton's shot from the outside is one that Coach Eddie Denar spoke of earlier in this season, and we really haven't seen him light it up from the outside as expected, but tonight looks like he's really open to taking that shot, and tonight is the night. Well, it's going to have to be. I mean, I've, I've, I've mentioned already that Kizo Brown cannot be your only guy, and if he's not on, like, like he, he hasn't really been on tonight, only six points, they need somebody else, and not just Deion Lau, but other bodies to step up as Deion Lau might swipe right through the middle for But We have someone from Naptown it says, Tones Mom, shout out Letitia Wilson. Okay. Tones Mom, shout out Naptown. 317. Ooh, Todd Forster with the steal. He can shoot it. Oh, he's foot out of bounds. So his big feet right there, AB. Call those boats. <laughs> big old boats. B. Jones playing the tracks in here. I'm not sure if y'all can hear right now, but he's definitely got it bumping. B. Jones has the it. David Macarena. B. Jones definitely has it bumping in here, for sure. We over here swaying. Hey. Inside Long Island, New York, Hofstra University, David Macarena, Philadelphia Ballers 56, Chicago Ballers 44. I think Lonzo likes this song as well. I believe he's a big Migos fan. But this is Metro Boomin and Offset, right? Got Devin Hayde, who's still out of the ball game right now with the ankle injury, giving his teammates some words of encouragement, telling him, shoot it, let but that the good thing, thing go. The good thing about it is that so far, they're not really missing him. Only down, only up, only down Chicago, still down 12 points with him on the bench. Tight defense by Jalen Nixon. Kizo Brown able to draw contact and a foul. That's battle time. That's where the great defense is. Look back. Get through. Get through. Kizo Brown with the ball at the top of the key. Juwan Buckner guarding. Kizo Ooh. with this. Spin move and the bucket on Jay Buckets. Now, what Philadelphia does not want to have happen is for Kizo to start getting it going. Kizo Brown for this Chicago team is the guy who, when you ask him, am I my brother's keeper? He'll say, yes, yes I, I am. am. <laughs> and then go for 46 as he did the other night in Chicago. Oh, oh. no. We wanted to see Tone fly right there. I thought he just, I was ready to see him go go to the moon on that one, A.B. And I think he really wanted that one as well. I think he wanted that. This this arena wanted that for him. Yes. Looks like Devin Hayde is checking back into the game. Thankfully, that ankle seems to be okay. Devin Hayde, the praying mantis. You might have to ask him how he feels about that one. Jalen Nixon still. Todd Royster with the heads up play. Throwing the ball off of Dion Lyles. 
leg to save it, save the turnover. We have somebody who finally, I guess they, they, they recognize the New Jack City reference. <laughs> you did. That was New Jack City. Yes, sir. Nino and G Money. G so I guess Money. between the two of us, I'm Nino and you're G Money. I, I, there's <laughs> not a, really a winner in that. <laughs> Based on that movie, it's just I, a I just two wasn't L's. saying there was. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm I just asking. I, where, are so, you the G money? And I can't. I'm the Nino. I, I don't want to claim any of that. Actually, <laughs> Jeff Weiss. Yes, you can get a shout out. Let us know where, you, where you're tuning in from as well. Devin Hay is right on the edge of that sideline right there. Marquis the Catalyst showing that the quick cuts to the basket that you like so much. Miraz Antonio, I'm guessing you're asking for a shout out as well. I think we see the LA Ballers have just arrived to the building. Folks, stay tuned. This is only the first game of our double header. Our next game will feature the Los Angeles Ballers taking on the New York Ballers. New York in front of their home crowd here, looking to have a different outcome than the last time they played that L.A. team in L.A. Now, what I want to know is, A.B., is, is this New York crowd going to be fired up like the last two cities that we've been to? Chicago really set the tone, and Dallas answered the bell as well. So can this New York crowd really get fired up when their hometown team takes the court? I believe they will. This, this New York crowd got here early today. Folks waiting outside for hours to get in the building. That's how bad they want to see those New York ballers play. Jalen oh. Nixon <laughs> with the sauce cabinet open. Any particular sauce, A.B.? Jalen Nixon had that oregano mixed with the Kizo Brown with a beautiful drive and a beautiful finish. Kizo can definitely play this game. Kizo Brown gets in attack mode and he stays there. Todd Royster, beautiful find. Four seconds left on the shot clock. The back iron there. Not sure how that wasn't a foul. Coach Eddie Denar seen the same thing that I saw. Getting a little push in the back there, but no call there. Jawan Buckner, a leading scorer for this Philadelphia baller squad. Waiting as these refs deliberate. They're wondering whether that last ball either hit the rim or not. was it a shot clock violation. They it called the jump ball. Yeah. It did not hit the rim. I don't think it hit the rim either, but either way, Chicago ball. Devin Hayde trying to convince the ref. We got Montra Dixon inbounded for the Chicago Ballers. Got some love from Portugal. Little Rock in the house, Arkansas. Deion Lau driving to the basket. Montreal Dixon. Oh, nice block by Todd Royster. Todd Royster letting Montreal Dixon know there's no easy buckets in the Junior Basketball Association. Harrison oh. Ryder with the acrobatic finish. Harrison Pulls Rieger. the guns out of the holster. Fires a couple shots up at the ceiling. Harrison Rieger, let's check him out again. Up, under, oopty, whoopty, doopty. <laughs> Harrison Rieger, Morristown, New Jersey. Was able to speak with Harrison Rieger before the game. I asked him, Harrison, 
Why did JBA? We see you got some talent. Why did JBA? He told me in high school he had a ton of accolades. All this, all that. Went to junior college, 11 and 7 in his first season there. But his ultimate goal is to be able to play professional basketball. And what I took from what he was saying is Harrison Rieger realized that when you have a job, it's easier to get a job. Jay Buckets. Jay Buckets. Told me that when you have a job, it's easier to get a job. He wants to play professional, whether it be overseas or here in the United States. Just felt like turning pro right now in the Junior Basketball Association, building some connects. And this wonderful exposure from you guys tuning in and watching in the building at home. But just an opportunity he couldn't pass up. Juwan Buckner. Unable to touch the rim there. Harrison Rieger with the rebound. James Martin not happy right now. They felt like Kizo Brown traveled on that play. Kizo Brown with a quick shot, but Tone Singleton with the putback. He's been playing very well this game, A.B. Ooh, oh, beautiful spin move by Devin <laughs> I Hayes. think that ankle is doing just fine based on that last play. And Hay with a steal. Harrison Rieger gets it back. Harrison Rieger finishes with the left hand. Unable to connect. Gets his own rebound. Brings it back out. Finds Deion Lyle low. Marquise the catalyst. Getting things started. Kicks it up to Jalen Nixon. Beautiful lay-in. Way to turn defense into offense for these Philadelphia ballers. Coach Eddie Denard not happy right now. Call the timeout. See if he can get his troops settled down right now. Full timeout on the court. Philadelphia ballers leading 66 to 53. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Can they get back into this ball game? All right, let's take a look at these stats. We still have the rebound totals. Pretty much neck and neck. But the edge goes to Philadelphia when it comes to steals. 11 steals to four. As you've seen just then in that last bucket, defense turning into offense in the transition for this Philadelphia team who's played with very active hands all evening long. Philadelphia team, a team that's from pretty close to here. Philadelphia only being a few hours away. Feeling like they're at home tonight in front of this New York crowd. That's very possible. Probably have some family in the building. I can imagine from Naptown, Indianapolis, where we're in Chicago, it was only three hours from my house. I felt like I was in my neighborhood at least. Maybe. We won't be getting close to Alabama on this trip, so <laughs> I'm sorry, Brandon. It's okay. Roll tied anyway. Jalen Nixon with some tight defense. Brado Hargo breaks it. Some fancy dribbling. Ooh. Montreal Dixon unable to put it back. Todd Royster gets the break going. Devin Hayde, a guy who will shoot it and Jay it from anywhere, misses that one. Harrison Rieger kicking it up to Dion Lau. Beautiful left-handed finish, unable to finish it all the way, though. Devin Hayde. Devin Just Hayde's a little tidy. slight layup, nothing, nothing too fancy. He got the two points. Size to take now. it easy on that ankle. Yeah. Size to use a little butter. Didn't want to pull the jelly out. Didn't want to pull the jam out. Well, there's nothing wrong with a little butter. Put a little butter on that oh. toast. Like, Hard foul on Braden Brado Hargrove. Brado Hargrove hops right back up, though. Antoine Smith says he needs that Florida trip from you, from y'all, Bill. I guess he's talking about you. Oh, I know Antoine Smith. That's the homie. <laughs> well, when I saw he called you Bill, and that's what you said they call you back home, I figured yep. that you had to have known this guy. Keita Smith says, A.B., let Jalen Nixon know that we here in the 757 are proud. Hold on, let me mute the mic and I'm gonna yell it out to him. Jalen Nixon, <laughs> folks in the 757 proud. I let him know. 
Yeah, yeah, say it just a guy. little bit louder. Man. He heard me standing right here. He kind of whispered that, actually. I don't want to scream too loud in the folks tuning in at home's ear. We're coming to you live today from New York. Devin Hayde driving to the basket, able to draw contact. Shout out Fifi Baby's mom, Fionn Brown from the Atlanta Ballers. Thank you for tuning in. Definitely. We appreciate the support. Absolutely. Atlanta is not even playing tonight, and she's in the building showing love to the Junior Basketball Association. Well, I just like the fact that she called him Fifi Baby. You know, I, that's something I, I feel very dear to me. You know, I started calling him that. One of my many nicknames, of course. Yes, the nickname God. Devin Hay, 12 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Well, you haven't dropped your, re your, your movie reference of the night. Are you, are you holding out on that? Are, are we, we went to New Jack City earlier. Well, I mean, that was kind of like a... So a teaser? Well, I'm just saying that was, that's like a impromptu type thing, you know? I'm just so good, I just made it feel impromptu. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Folks, let me know. Throw me a movie in the comments section so we can get that. Shout out to Trina Johnson, Kizo's mother is in the house. Looking at Shot Town. Oh, I'm not sure Devin how Hayes. that wasn't a push off there by Devin Hay. Josiah Pope getting the break started for Chicago Ballers. Brado John. Brado Hargrove from Racine, Wisconsin. The Brinkets. Brado Hargrove, a player, Racine, Wisconsin. Spoke with his grandma. Oh, Jordan Wooden high off the glass. She let us know all about Brado's family and a lot of the success they've had in the Chicago area, the Racine, Wisconsin area. Very educated family. So for Brado to decide to turn pro right now, play basketball, big decision. But a ton of support from his family. Absolutely. Very sweet grandmother as well. That was Nina Johnson, who's actually Kizo's mom. Her, her twin sister, Trina Johnson, was letting us know that they were in the building. In the building. Harrison Rieger. Darryl McGuire says rebound. his grandson is Devin Hay. Shout out to Daryl McGuire. Got a lot of family tuning in. Love to see that support. We got the big baller brand, a, 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 a brand that is built on family. So anytime we get some family support, it just feels natural. Jalen Nixon bringing it up to this Philadelphia team. We know he can get buckets whenever Ooh. he's ready. See a tie up here. It's a physical game for Devin Hayde. Chicago team who you talked about that toughness that they want to bring are definitely letting Devin Hayde know that they, they've they seen him on the scouting report and they're not going to let just let him get off tonight. Kizo's family says, we in here. Kizo on the bench right now, taking a little bit of a breather right now. Kizo's family in here on phone now. Y'all in the building. I think I just saw Wooden's mothers in the building as well. A lot of family, like you said, is in, in the comments section. Again, please, if you're relatives or whatever the case may be, definitely make sure that you let it, let that be known. We'd love to recognize you and shout you out. Taj Royster, 14 rebounds, second point of the evening. Well, you mentioned that in the first game that he played in um, a few days ago that his objective or main goal was to, to get about 20 rebounds. Not really doing much on the offensive end in terms of scoring with two points tonight, but 14 boards is nothing to sneeze on. Especially right now, we've still got a whole quarter of basketball left. Exactly. Brado Hargrove going to the line for three free throws. Fouled by Jalen Nixon. I think he... We probably want to have that back. 
Deion Lowe's family is in the building as well. Shout out to all the Lowe's in Hastings, Nebraska. All right, we've got one minute and 31 seconds left here in this third quarter. Philadelphia Ballers leading 72, Chicago Ballers 59. Time to make some predictions. Who do you got know, winning this game? Who do you got winning this game? Let's take it up a notch. Let us know the final score. We got Bam Bam's sister checking in. Again, I, I think I may have had my... my my face may have been turned. I didn't get the explanation. Where did the nickname come from, Bam Bam? Please let me know. Devin Hayes pulling up from NBA range. Oh, too much air on that one. Harrison Rieger. James Martin. All up. James Martin not happy with that shot from Devin Hayes. Rado Hargrove letting it rip from outside tonight. Harrison Rieger showing that intensity with the pass, then gets in there trying to get the board. Devin Hayde has had a, a lot of contact this evening. You can see it on his face. He has some predictions right now here, A.B. A lot of people believe that Chicago is going to come back and win this. Riegers from Pittsburgh are here, are here in support. They love Harrison. Love you, Harrison, they say. Shout out to the Riegers. Harrison plays for the Chicago team, but will be in the building in Trenton, New Jersey, where the home games for the Philadelphia Ballers will take place. So all of his supporters definitely show up and show out for Harrison Rieger in that game. Dion Lyle sinks the free throw. James Martin, as you see the look on his face right now, definitely not happy right now. Got the technical foul. Letting the referees have it right now. Coach James Martin in that luxurious suit. <laughs> Got it from the Steve Harvey shop. Devin oh. Hay with the spin move. Oh, 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 Devin Hay. I don't think there's anything wrong with that ankle. I've already said that, but I'm just confirming it. Devin Hay. After spin cycle working. Oh, Harrison get that Rieger. shot out of here, says Brandon Stacy. Harrison Rieger just learned one of the big things about the Junior Basketball Association. There's no easy buckets. Zero. I like the drive by Harrison. I just love the block even better. You know, I'm, I've always been, oh, hold on, I'm reading this explanation. He had big hands when he was little, so we named him Bam Bam from the Flintstones. I believe that's what it says. Let me scroll back up here. Bam Bam in the Flintstones. I guess we could have guessed that. Well, I man, I had a guess, but I didn't want to just assume that, you know? Brandon Stacy unable to connect on his first free throw for the Philadelphia Ballers to extend this lead. 43 seconds left in the third quarter. Brandon Stacy with five points, one rebound, one assist. As the Philadelphia Ballers lead 75 to 62 over the Chicago Ballers. Well, Deion what, Lyle. What I was gonna say, A B, is that I'm not I'm not I'm I'm a big fan, or I'm not a oh sorry, Antonio Singleton with three, 34 seconds left. Well, um, but speaking of, of that technical foul, I don't mind coaches getting technicals because sometimes you have to send a message to the refs that you know they need to do their job as well. So I think that's exactly what James Martin was doing. Let's see if the Chicago team takes the last shot. Brado, Hardgrove, still shooting that thing from outside. <laughs> Chicago with four seven. three pointers on the evening. <laughs> Devin Hay trying to get the last shot. Oh, that's not going to count. I would like to see that one actually
actually roll off the rim. I thought that it may have possibly had a chance to get that last bounce. I did too, yes. All right. All right, so here we go. One more quarter left. And Philadelphia Ballers leading 75, Chicago Ballers 68. We've seen this Chicago team start to get a few more assists and close that gap there, but still on the defensive end. Philadelphia, 12 steals. You can win ball games with 12 steals in a game. Absolutely. Turnovers are even right now. Seems like a lot, a lot of stats are even with these two teams. Chicago just really hasn't knocking down shots, and they started to in the end of that third quarter, so that might be a nice sign like when you see Bredo, uh, Bredo Hargrove, Harrison Rieger, some of these other players get on the board, hitting it from deep. Xavier Marquise Johnson, the catalyst with that two-handed flush in that last quarter, something special. Lighting it up from the outside. Marquise Johnson definitely was a key player for this Philly team and them having the ability to maintain this lead. Right now, Juwan Buckner still leading Philly in points of 18 points, seven assists, and four rebounds. Right behind him, Devin Hayde has woken up 15 points, five assists, five rebounds, two steals. Dion Lau getting into his offense. Oh. Shots are continuing to fall for the Chicago team in this fourth quarter. Devin Hay tried to throw one up there for Todd Royster for him to apply the hammer. Jalen Nixon unable to handle the slick pass across the court, which would have been Almost an easy bucket for him. Well, see, this is what I worried about when I was talking about the last game against Atlanta. You know, this, as Dion, wow, the three. <laughs> but this Philadelphia team, again, they were up big in the first half, and now they're struggling in the fourth quarter. I think they may have given them two on that play. 75-72, Philadelphia trying to hang on to this lead. Brings it up court. Got Tone Singleton, who's already had 17. I think he may have gotten away with the, the travel, quarter. too. Deion Lyle is putting his team on his back right now in this fourth quarter. Only down one. Some great balls moving on that possession from the Chicago Ballers. Uh, Harrison Rieger called for a foul. Probably an unnecessary foul right there. Getting this fourth quarter started. Let's have another check in and roll call. Where you from? Let us know if you're just tuning in. Let us know. If, to shout you out. Nice backdoor cut there by Jalen Nixon. Let us know if you'll be sticking around for tonight's second game. Right after this, folks, we have the New York Ballers hometown team taking on the cross country rival, the Los Angeles Ballers. East Coast, West Coast. This is a rematch from the first game on our inaugural night where the Los Angeles Ballers were able to pretty much dominate this New York squad. And I'm curious to see now that this New York team is starting to adopt a different style defensively. You're starting to see a lot more up-tempo up -tempo, as well as some, some trapping in the half court, weak side traps as well. Curious to see if that style plays better to their lack of height and size. Devin Hayde up to the challenge on Dion Lau. Braden Hargrove steps out of bounds. Oh, yes, definitely his heel right, back right heel. there on that yeah. line. Those bright shoes he's wearing makes it very easy. Oh, Antonio Singleton. Antonio Singleton with some. Fancy dribbling to beat that press. Kicks it up to Deion Lyle. Kicks it to Harrison Rieger, who thought about pulling up. Decides to pass it to Montreal Dixon. 
Deflection by Todd Royster for this Philadelphia Ballers team who has had active hands on the defensive end all evening long. Filling up these passing lanes for the Chicago team. Ooh, Marquise Johnson with the quick hands. Todd Royster bringing up the point. Jalen Nixon. Oh, again. Jalen Nixon is a reverse. top chef. Definitely very saucy in the jelly and the jam. But Dion Lyle silences the crowd on this end. This is the reason why he was the sixth man of the year in the Conference USA. Chicago team has closed the gap. Philadelphia leading 79 to 77 over the Chicago Ballers. We have nine minutes and 28 seconds left to play. What Philadelphia doesn't want to have happen is them to give up a, another huge lead and lose a ball game. Antonio Singleton. Singleton, cash rules everything around me. A one point game, folks. Eddie Denard clapping it up for his team, trying to get him fired up on the defensive end. Eddie Denard has wanted to see Tone Singleton take those shots from the outside. Jay Buckets Since answers the right back of this season. Deion Lyle with a strong finish. Beautiful pass by Brado Hargrove. It's a nice pass there. Even better finish. Kizo Brown going to check in on the next dead ball. Juan Buckner. Devin Hayes with a nice finish. He's got some great offensive game. Deion Lyle trying to give some up. Devin Hayes on the ground. He wants it, folks. Juwan Buckner sees Jalen Nixon, who can finish. And he does. does. <laughs> Jalen Nixon, his layup package is, is something special. Ooh. Jalen Nixon with a big board right there. Devin Hayes. Tries to throw a lob up to Jalen Nixon. Coach James Martin doesn't like it, though. All right, we got seven minutes and 48 seconds in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia leads 87 to Chicago 82. Coach James Martin calls Devin Hayde over to the bench to let him know that that alley-oop was unnecessary at that moment. Tone Singleton unable to graze the rim on that shot. Devin Hayes showing that dribbling. Beautiful finish. I feel like that move right there, that's why I called Devin Hayde the praying mantis. He started to really move slow, quick changes of pace, slows it down, picks it up. Very beautiful ball handler once he gets into his, his groove. Smooth, it's almost poetic. He's just a, and I said it earlier, he's just an all-around offensive player. He just understands how to play the game, especially from the offensive end of the other floor. Evan Hayes, 17 points, six rebounds. Kizo Brown, who's had a, 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 a decent-sized break. Hopefully, has those fresh legs. Harrison Riga drives, unable to finish, but does create contact and draws a foul. We'll be going to the free-throw line. Looks to cut into this Philadelphia Ballers lead.
Folks in the comment section believe Jalen Hands is the best player on the court. Jalen Nixon. Jalen Hands plays for, he's in the NBA right now. Actually, I think he went back to UCLA. Oh, he did? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's probably a smart decision. Should have came through these Junior Basketball Association, though. James Martin might possibly call a timeout on this next possession. He is not liking the way his team is playing on the offensive end. As Kizo Brown oh. <laughs> gets the toilet bowl. <laughs> Kizo Brown. Right around the rim there. Kizo Brown with a huge smile after that shot drops in there. Marquise Johnson calling for a bucket. Wants to try to go to work on Kizo in the post. And he does so with the reverse lay-in. Kizo didn't really offer much resistance on that. That was a little bit too easy for Marquise Johnson there. Deion Lyle pulls up. Nice pull up there. It's pretty much automatic from that spot. Got some bait. Who's the best on the court? Harrison Rieger has showed up as the best on the court in the comments. Deion Lyle pushes it, finds Tone oh. Singleton. Two-handed flash. This is a tie ball game, maybe. That was just a little taste of what Tone Singleton can, can do but above the rim. Two blocks right there from Chicago. Looked like Tone got a little piece of it. Then Montreal Dixon finished it off. Well, we talked about the, the credo of this Chicago team, and that's the toughness mentality that they bring. They're not just going to just lay down and just let this Philadelphia team just walk all over them, and that's how they've been able to get back to this ball game, tie it up. Let's see how Antonio Singleton flushes it home. That was, he just was gliding through the air right there. That's just slight work right there. That's, that's, light, even, that's something easy. Yeah, if y'all think that's something, that's really... That's not really much from Antonio Singleton. Speaking of the toughness of this more, Chicago yeah. team, talking with Coach Kieran Woods, and he told me, if we're not going to be the most talented team in the Junior Basketball Association, we at least want to be the toughest team in the Junior Basketball Association. And starting with their last game in Chicago, they're on pace to definitely be that toughest team. I agree. Here we got the leading leading players for both teams. Jawan Buckner, 22 points. Tone Singleton, 22 points as well. Jawan Buckner going for a double-double with nine assists. One, one assist shy of that double-double. Tone Singleton with three steals. Well, you know, a lot of that came in the first half in terms of those assist numbers. And, you know, I talked to him at halftime, and I, and I asked him, I said, what do y'all have to do to maintain this lead for four quarters? He said, we just got to continue to share the ball, continue to, to trust in each other and believe in each other. And, and you're starting to see a little bit less of that as this game goes on. Five minutes and 42 seconds left in the game. All right, folks, stick around with us. This is oh, only the first game Brown. of our doubleheader. After this, we have the Los Angeles Ballers taking on the hometown New York Ballers. Folks, that's going to be an epic game. Obviously, we know the two right there. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles has tons of fire, firepower on the offensive end, but you've got a reinvigorated New York Ballers squad in front of their home crowd who is sure to turn up. Kizo Brown. Mm. Kizo Brown getting it going. We That's talked about that AB, that if he starts to get it going, it's going to be tough sledding for this Philadelphia team, but you do not want that one person right there to get hot. What we've seen is there was an adjustment right there from Coach Eddie Denard. Last game, kept Kizo in through the third quarter and then through the beginning of that first quarter and then towards the, I mean, the fourth quarter, and then towards the end of the game, seeing Kizo start to get tired and wear down. This time, pulls him out to start the fourth quarter, brings him in with about six minutes to go, and Kizo is fresh. Well, I think that that was, I mean, that's a good observation, and I mentioned that in the last game, um, and also Coach Denard said in the last game as well, he's like he pretty much played the entire game, but different, you know, he saw he wasn't as, as on as he was. 
Take him out. Let him refresh a little bit. See if he can start knocking some shots down. That's what we're starting to see from Kizo. All right. If you're going to be sticking around with us for tonight's second game, let us know in the comments. Also, let's try something different. Give me a movie to reference for that second game. We're here in New York, Long Island, AKA Strong Island, watching the Philadelphia Ballers take on the Chicago Ballers. Very close game. And you know, the movie reference has to be something that AB can put a story together for us. So make sure this is a good one. Nice it really just has to be something I've seen. <laughs> Devin Hayes. It's a nice little hesitation dribble there. Oh, nice bullet pass by Kizo Brown. Harrison Rieger almost dropped that. It had so much steam on it. Air Bud, have you seen Air Bud? Someone mentioned that. I, I know of Air Bud. Yeah, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of the animal sports movies. It just always seemed a little bit corny to me, so. However, this is your platform, but I'm just saying that me personally, I have not seen Air Bud, but I really have a desire to see it either. Coach Carter above the rim. Above the rim, that might be a good one. Kizo Brown for two. Brado Hargrove tried to do a touch pass there. Well, it right that, into the outreach hands of the Philadelphia defense. That possession started off with the ill-advised shot by Kizo Brown and definitely wasn't helped at all by Braden Hargrove's misstep there as well. Philadelphia down two right now with three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Chicago leading 96, Philadelphia 94. Philadelphia does not want to lose this game after having such a huge lead early on. Oh. <laughs> They just let Montrell Dixon throw it off the glass, get his own rebound, and tip it back in. Oh, Montrell Dixon. Montrell Dixon showing no easy buckets. Now, like what Braden Hargrove did right there, it's almost as though he, he saw that he was about to take a very bad shot. A little hesitation and drove it in strong to get the foul. Some of you guys who made your predictions earlier, how many of you are right right now? Well, I may mention that there were a lot of people in the comments who really felt that the Chicago team was going to come back and win. And although the game is not over, we still have plenty of time left, two minutes and 30 seconds left. They're up six points, 194 in this fourth quarter. I see a different adjustment here as well. One of the things that we've seen in that game where Philadelphia gave up that huge lead is offensively, they started to go away from Devin Hayes. It was in the last minute, they started trying to run the offense through him, and he was still hot, but it was too late. Hargrove slowing it down, running some time off the clock here. Philadelphia playing some tight defense. Got a minute, 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Chicago leading 100, Philadelphia 98. Folks, we got a pretty close game here. We've already seen one Chicago, one game with the Chicago Ballers team going to overtime. Let me know, do you think this game is going into overtime? Or will one of these teams be able to pull it out in regulation? 
Still have Philadelphia leading in the assist column. Chicago picking it up on the defensive end. Six blocks. See Chicago with the bigs doing some heavy lifting. 61 rebounds this game. You know, someone referenced the crowd in here, and this has definitely been one of our, our bigger crowds, and you probably can't even tell. There's probably another 80 who are lining up right now getting ready to meet LeVar Ball. Um, I, I can see them on the opposite side. So you'll probably see even more once the second game comes, yes. once everybody gets settled in. Yep. But there's a, a huge line forming right now. I can't even count. There's definitely a lot of them now. To me, LeVar and Lonzo, both LeVar and Lonzo are in the building. Jalen Hands still active. Jalen Nixon still active with the hands. <laughs> I want to call him Jalen Hands because his hands so active. He's been deflecting passes well, I don't all think, night. I don't think Jalen Hands would mind the way that Jalen Nixon has been yeah. playing. If there was no Jalen Hands, that would be a beautiful nickname for him, though, because <laughs> the finger rolls and the sauce oh, all the way around the rim. He's so be amazing. Shot Town, Inga Woods, finest. Devin Hay. Devin Hay being guarded by Tone Singleton. Nice job Jordan there. Wooden. Jordan Wooden. Drives past Harrison Rieger. Jalen Nixon hoping to get active some more with those hands. He's O'Brown. Nice help defense there by Marquise Johnson. Oh, Antonio Tone Singleton. Singleton. Huge block right there. Block. Harrison Rieger attacking the hoop. Oh, oh, oh. Got some Jalen Nixon. Hard landing right there. Got, looks like Jalen Nixon got caught there on the ground. Some players fought for a rebound over top of him. Very scary sight. All players got up. Healthy and strong. Two-point ball game. Antonio Singleton, 22 points, 14 rebounds. And a clutch free throw to extend this lead to three with 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Todd Royster checks in for the Philadelphia Ballers. Someone says you, could, you should call him Jalen with the hands, re referencing Jalen Nixon. There you go, Jalen with the hands. Jalen with the flick of the wrist. Tom Singleton misses the second one. Todd Royster, the big rebound for the Philadelphia Ballers. Devin Hayes decides to pull up. Quick shot there. Kizo Brown with the board. Still oh. quick hands by Todd Royster. Marquise Johnson pulls way oh. from way out there. Marquise from way out there. The catalyst. From, that's, that's, that's from about two feet behind NBA range, folks. He's feeling it. Marquise Johnson from Middletown, New York. Feels like he's at home. Well, he's family got his, is in the building. He's got his family in the building. Putting on for the, the city. This his crowd dad is loving wild. it right now. I'm seeing him. Man, there is a super long line wrapped around the building to see LeVar and Lonzo here at halftime. Folks, New York showed up in droves today. Man, this Philadelphia team does not want to go home with the loss after being up. Leading them in points, Jawan Buckner, who we haven't really seen be that active as far as filling up the box score. Nine assists still. One assist shy of a double-double. Three re rebounds shy of a triple-double. And Tone Singleton, who has some pretty big blocks here late in this game. 23 points. Ty 
ball game, folks. Coming to you live here from Long Island, New York. Strong Long Island, Island, New York. Chicago Ballers taking on the Philadelphia Ballers. 21 seconds left in the ball game. They want to get this ball to Kizo Brown, who is wide open right now. Tone Singleton, who can shoot that thing as well, misses it. Harrison, Harrison Regan with, with the, the board. He tacks the basket. Kizo with the game winner. Oh, oh Kizo hits oh, it. Kizo. Kizo hits it. Philadelphia with seven seconds left. Still some time on the clock. Devin Hay can shoot this ball. Devin Hay can shoot this ball. Six seconds left on the, in the clock, folks. Kizo Brown, Chicago's own, puts the Chicago Ballers up by two. 105 to 103. That was inside the NBA three-point line. So it only counts as two. Kizo Brown. Kizo still clutch for the Chicago team. Well, you can tell that he really wanted that 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 ball in that moment. I mean, big players yes. make big time shots, AB. Yes, he wanted it from the the outset of that original inbound. They weren't able to get it to him. He was he found a way to get open about three or four times on that possession. Harrison Rieger able to get a big board and find Kizo Brown for bucket to take the lead. For those of y'all in the comments, who do you want trying to take this last shot for the Philadelphia Ballers? Do they go for two or do they go for the game winner three? Devin Hay going to work. Finds Todd Royster who can shoot it. Off the rim. Philadelphia loses another ball game after having a decent lead. Chicago Ballers come away with the victory off the Kizo Brown game winner. Man, folks, Junior Basketball Association inaugural season history in the making. But this also has been extremely exciting, folks. A bunch of great games. We've seen this last time. The last time we watched this Chicago team play, they took it into overtime. This time, buzzer beater finish from Kizo Brown. Both teams put on the show this evening in front of this Long Island, New York crowd. And folks, folks showed up here today from Long Island, all over the city of New York, all over the five boroughs. They're in the building. And if you were here to watch that first game, you definitely got a W. Chicago able to overcome 21 turnovers. Philadelphia playing very great defense with 17 steals, but unable to get the victory. Chicago 105, Philadelphia 103. You folks who, who predicted that Chicago would come back and win this game, you got an extra W this evening. All thumbs up. We've got an interview here with Chicago head coach Denard. Eddie Denard. And also an interview with Chicago baller Dion Lau. LeVar, LeVar Ball is currently addressing the crowd right now. I see a ton of folks in the building here in Long Island, New York. Strong Island, New York. All right, let's kick it over to Brandon Williams, who's with I'm Dion Lau. Dion Lau, the Chicago Ballers, who just fought back from a tight deficit in this game. Dion. What went through your mind when Kizo Brown hit that, that game winning shot? Man, he's a killer, man. He's a killer. Shy's finest, man. That's all I can say, man. Glad to pull that one out. It was sloppy, but uh, we got the win. So you guys were down 14 at the half. How were y'all able to, uh, to fight back to win this game? Uh, we just had to stay with it. We just keep fighting. Uh, we got a lot of dogs on the team, and we just stay with it. We got to keep fighting. Next time, we got to come out from the jump and do it, though. Now, you guys have won your second straight game. How does it feel to be to go two in a row and try to keep the streak going? Uh, I like to say never get too high on your wins and never get too low on your losses. We try to keep the same mindset. Um, just go back to the locker room, talk about what we need to do to get better, practice tomorrow, and really prepare better for the next team so we come out better and play better overall. Nice. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. What's up? <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the, the stats from this game. All right, as you see there, we've got 
Tone Singleton, who was the, the leading scorer for the Chicago Ballers team. Jawan Buckner, who got it hot early for the Philadelphia Ballers, kind of cooled off there. Devin Hay tried to come in and add something to that, but Chicago showing that toughness that Coach Eddie Denard is trying to instill in that team. Let's talk to Coach Eddie Denard with Brandon Williams. All right, we are back with winning coach of the Chicago Ballers, Eddie Denard. Coach, how were y'all able to come back in this second half the way you did? Man, I went in the locker room at halftime very disappointed, so I went in there and challenged those guys, told them what they needed to do, which was fight, and they brought the fight in the second half, and they never gave up, never put their head down, and they just kept going, and that's how we came up with the victory. Now, Kizo Brown, he didn't have the greatest first half, but you got stuck with him, and he had some big-time shots in the fourth quarter, including that game-winning shot. What went through your mind when you saw that ball go in? Uh, I know uh, Kizo was going to come in the second half. He has a great amount of confidence, and I knew once that shot was going up, I knew it was a game-winning basket, and I knew we just had to go down here on the defensive end to get a stop. And I'm just happy my team was able to come through with the victory, man. It's, it's a great win. It's, any win you can get is a good win. And now you guys are now winning two, two in a row. How do you continue this win streak heading into this short break? Man, it's going to be tough, man. You know, these teams are very competitive, and we got to keep bringing our A game. Obviously, we brought our C game in the, in the first half, and we found ourselves down 17. We brought our A game in the second half, and we end up winning the game at the buzzer. So it's a, we just got to bring it every game. We can't play down the competition because everybody is good in this league. So I just hope that these guys get it and realize that they got to play a whole 48 minutes. We still waiting for a game like that. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Yes, now we'll take a look at some of the highlights from the game. Thank you. 